big in a big talk for her. Is she right here? Welcome. And so um, you're going to teach us about, we're going to aortic now. So we're going to spend the next couple of hours of a aortic. So can you just tell us about the anatomy so we know what we're doing? <laughs> um, thanks very much for that introduction. Uh, I'm Fiona. I'm a medical student and I know it's going to be surprising to many of you that I'm not actually a cardiologist that they've brought in to talk to you about um, aortic stenosis. But this does mean that I've done my anatomy learning quite recently. So hopefully I can give you guys a good little refreshment on that, whether or not I teach you much new. And yeah, so I'll be focusing on the um, aortic valve with particular reference to calcific aortic stenosis. So when we think about the aortic valve, it's obviously very important to con contextualize this understanding in terms of the left ventricle, which is the primary pump around which the rest of the heart is organized. Um, and we have blood flowing in through the left atrium, through the mitral valve here, and out through the, um, where's my cursor? out through the left ventricular outflow tract, through the aortic valve and into the ascending aorta. Um, and so it's also important to consider the, the um, distribution or arrangement of these valves. So the mitral valve is intraventricular and the aortic valve is just above that in the aorta itself. And they're not actually in a 180 degree plane. They're slightly offset at about 135 degrees. Um, and this is particularly important for the LV outflow tract, which I'll talk about soon. But the features of the valve itself, we have the annulus and the sinus of Valsalva, which ends at the sinotubular junction before um, going up into the ascending aorta there. So flow during, uh, through the aortic valve occurs during systole, and this flow is laminar. Um, and this is made, well, the sinuses of Valsalva are particularly relevant for this um, for a few reasons. First of all, they maintain pressure um, of these sinuses by vortices that occur. So little spirals of this blood occur in these, these sinuses and they pressurize them to avoid a vacuum which would disrupt this laminar flow. Also the vortices um, continue during diastole and, and create a sort of negative pressure which aids in the closure of the valve at the end of systole and maintains closure during diastole. And the pressure that these vortices create also sends some blood down the right and left coronary arteries. So blood flows out by the LV outflow tract, which is a short distance just below the aortic valve. And this is made up by the interventricular septum on one side, and on the other side, the fibrous base of the anterior mitral leaflet, which is part of the aortic mitral curtain. Uh, and this LV outflow tract is particularly important when we think about echocardiography, because this is where we can estimate um, cardiac output. And so you can see here in this, in this moving image that there's a hinge point of the mitral valve. Um, and again, this is made possible, as I mentioned, by the 135 degree angle of the valves, because if it was in a 180 degree plane, we wouldn't have this hinge point and we wouldn't have the LV outflow tract, um, which gives us our estimation, yeah, of cardiac output. In terms of the features of the valve itself, the aortic valve is generally tricuspid valve. It can be bicuspid. Uh, and we have the non-coronary, the right coronary and left coronary cusps here, as you can see. And yeah, it's closed in diastole and open in systole. And you can see that it's separated only by a thin fibrous uh, barrier here, which I mentioned earlier, the aortomitral curtain. And this is all that's separating the aortic valve from the mitral valve. And this extends yeah, down into the ventricle and it gives us one side of our left ventricular outflow tract. The other important uh, anatomical feature to consider here <clears throat> is the bundle of His, which runs just below the um, seam of the non-coronary and right coronary cusps. Uh, and this can be damaged with any sort of aortic intervention, both surgical or transcatheter, and it can lead to complete heart block, which is obviously something that we want to avoid. So when we look at the specific anatomy, this bundle of his projects from the right atrium just below the non-coronary cusp and runs under the membranous septum before branching out below the right coronary cusp. And this is just beneath the endocardium of the, of the left ventricle. So it's it's quite prone to being damaged and um, complete heart block is, is a risk, yeah, of both surgical valve replacement and cavi. In terms of calcific aortic stenosis, this occurs when we have age-related calcium deposits within the cusps. Generally, the annulus itself is healthy and pliable, so with valve replacement, removal of the cusps, we're able to maintain a healthy annulus, um, but it can extend to the annulus as well as beyond that to the aorta or the interventricular septum. More commonly, though, the place of extension of this calcification 
is actually down the anterior mitral leaflet in a sort of midline spine. And this doesn't usually project beyond halfway down the leaflet. But this extension of uh, aortic valvular calcification is different from uh, mitral annular calcification itself. So here we can see on the left a calcific aortic valve, and you can maybe see some extension of this calcification down the AML here. Now, this calcification is only on the ventricular surface of the AML. It's not inside the leaflet itself, and that's the differentiating factor um, from mitral annular calcification. And even with this extension, generally the aortic valve annulus is healthy. It's only affected in that one spot at the aortomitral curtain where it extends down onto the AML. Uh, on the right side, though, we can see a true mitral annular calcification, and you can also see it uh, where that black arrow is pointing on the left. And mitral annular calcification is intrinsic to the annulus itself and can affect the base of the leaflets too. So it's an important distinction to make because the extension of aortic valve calcification down the AML can be surgically removed by just chipping off those um, calcific nodules on the ventricular surface. So to summarize some of these points, first of all, outflow through the aortic valve is laminar and during systole, and um, it's associated with the vortices in the sinuses of Valsalva, which also aid in closing the valve and sending blood down the coronary arteries. Secondly, the LV outflow tract is made up by on one side, the interventricular septum, and on the other side, the aortomitral curtain projecting into the ventricle. Uh, and this is also made possible by the angle of the aortic valve to the mitral valve of about 135 degrees. The bundle of his is a really important anatomical feature to consider with aortic interventions because disruption of this, which is right beneath the non-coronary and right coronary cusps, can lead to complete heart block. And also calcific aortic stenosis affects the cusps itself but it may extend to the ventricular surface of the AML, and this is different to